everything's working properly. Returning. Uh, Hello, welcome back to Cody's Chopper Corner. Today we're gonna be working on my buddy Alex's shovel head again, doing some transmission work. So let's just hop right into it. Alright, so one of the first things that people think of when they think of an old chopper is the kickstart. A lot of these bikes came from the factory with a kickstarter, some of them didn't. Today that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to take the FLH transmission out of Alex's bike and convert it over to a kickstart only. And there's a couple reasons guys would do this back in the day. One you think about taking that whole primary off, if you're gonna run an open belt, you're kind of just simplifying the whole transmission primary setup to begin with. It's way easier to work on if you don't have to mess with any of that stuff. And you're eliminating electronics that sometimes go bad. So that's why we're gonna go through, get rid of all the electric start stuff on this bike. I know there's gonna be Plenty of guys that think we're stupid for doing that, but hey, it's better than being stuck on the side of the road when your starter goes out. So anyways, yeah, let's get into doing this swap. All right, so when we're doing this, you wanna make sure you have all the pieces that you're gonna need. You can buy a kit online that pretty much comes with everything you'll need. Um, I went through and kind of robbed some stuff off of different transmissions that we had laying around that we're not using, like this one. Seen better days. But yeah, so some of the parts you're gonna need is your ratcheting gear, the spring that goes behind it. This is the other half of the ratcheting gear that meshes in and then we got your kick, the kicker gear and you're gonna obviously need a kicker cover so this is the FLH style as you can see it doesn't have a hole for the kicker but if you take these off You can see it comes from the factory equipped to run this. You just pull your push rod out and your throw out bearing. And that's kind of how it sits just like that. So everything should just swap over. Um, one thing I did notice is it didn't have this stop right here for the kicker gear. So I took that one off that transmission, threw that on there. And also, this is like, it's got a couple different names, but they call that like the uh, the oil uh, slinger wiper. So while this thing right here is spinning, it's slinging oil and then that catches it and drops it back down. Keeps everything lubricated. But yeah, uh, we're gonna start in and get this thing swapped over. Okay, so we're gonna start by cleaning this whole gasket surface off really well. Um, you can use just like a normal razor blade, but you gotta be really careful because this is an aluminum case and you can actually dig into the aluminum case and make these leaks. So if you're gonna use a razor blade, just be really careful, hold it flat and try not to dig, just try to scrape. So we'll get that all cleaned up and we'll go from there. All right, so I took this thing for a ride on the parts washer, got it all cleaned up, ready for assembly. So we'll start getting into that. So first thing you're gonna want is your spring and this gear here. And when you put this stuff on, you don't wanna put it on dry, so I use, I use a assembly lube. So 
take that, rub it on there, and it's okay if it gets in there, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, you're gonna put this in. Spring first. This part of the spring is gonna go up against this piece here. And then if you look at this, this has a raised little edge that slips perfectly into that spring. And then once it's on there like that, it you can feel it bouncing back on that spring. And then you gotta rotate this until you can see the hole for the keyway, that slot. And you put your keyway in. Like that. And you take this gear, teeth side go in, and it also has a slot for the keyway. Just like that. There is a lock ring for this. I don't have one right now. I'll put one on later. Yeah, there you go. Put that on like that. Then you can take your push rod, slide that in. Everything should line up. And then we're gonna move on to the kicker cover now. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the, the kicker cover side. And I'll show you what you need to assemble all that, like all the parts you're gonna need. Obviously, your kicker arm, spring, the locking D-ring washer, the kicker shaft, and this kicker gear. And these have to go in in a certain way. See, there's it's a square hole, so it has to be clocked in the right orientation, or else your kicker, when it goes all the way forward, can be like pointed straight forward or straight back or up or down in the wrong way. So you gotta kind of mess around with that. Make sure you get it in the right orientation. So first things first, we need to get all the guts inside the kicker swapped out. So we have this here, your, I think it's called a clutch finger. I don't know. But we need to get this whole assembly swapped over into this. So, if you look down at the very bottom, there's a little C-clip that holds this whole assembly. And when you do this, you want to make sure you pay attention to that washer that's in here. And a little bit of up and down play is good, but that washer lets this finger here ride on the washer instead of the cast hole, because it'll wear it out. So gonna swap that over into this and then we'll be able to keep going so if you have a pair of these little needle nose with the bend it works really good just reach in and let me see if I can rotate it there you go pull that off and this whole thing will just come out swap it all over into this one okay now we're all swapped over we got this into the kicker one and we can start assembling the kicker shaft and again you want to use some assembly lube to do this don't ever try to start all this stuff up dry I mean usually it's for like engines like if you put a new cam in or something but like can't ever go wrong with some lube. 
Okay, so once you have everything loosely assembled, don't tighten anything down yet. One of the first things you need to make sure of is that you put your kicker gear spring on the correct way. I've done this like a million times and I still screw it up constantly. So you basically just want to make sure that <clears throat> when you put your kicker arm on like this, that when you push the kicker arm back, the spring wants to push it forward. Because I put them on, they can easily go on backwards. And then what happens is it'll want to push your kicker arm backwards instead of trying to return it to the top. So definitely make sure of that. And also, when you put this on, I was talking about the orientation of this peg. It has to sit right there, well, on this little shelf right here. So make sure you get that put on in the correct position. Also, another thing is this here. This little notch for when you put the bolt through here. If that's not in the right spot, you're not going to be able to get this bolt through. So things to keep in mind when you're doing this. And you might screw it up a couple times, it's fine. It's not a huge pain in the ass. Just check it before you fill it with fluid or put it in the bike, because then it'll be easier to work on. All right, so once you've gotten this gear on in the right spot to where it's gonna mesh up with this, and the kicker gear is gonna be pointing straight up. You can put this on. Like so. And then your nut. There's a flat side to this and a domed side. Flat side goes down. I'm just gonna do this hand tight so I can just show you guys. This is where it kind of gets tricky. So you have to pull your little oil slinger out enough so it can get around the back side of this and you also have to preload your kicker in order for all of this to mesh and it's kind of weird at first it's kind of weird at first but you'll be able to get it Let's see if i can set you guys down where you can see this all right hopefully you can see that so you're gonna take the kicker, and there's no resistance. You're gonna preload the kicker arm back to where this peg is gonna clear that little nub right there. And then you gotta take, set that back behind there. Stir the threads on. Keep going until it pops on like that. Then when you let go, this kicker arm should stay just like that. And then you can test it by doing the kicker. Everything feels like it's working. There's no binding. So yeah, now it's good to uh, throw all the locker, the lock washers and nuts back on here. And that's pretty much it. That's how you convert a non-kicker transmission into a kicker transmission. About the hardest part of this, and the hardest part of this entire process was cleaning the old gaskets off. So if you watch this video and follow the steps, you should be able to do it no problem. When you put these gaskets on, I, I really like using this three bond. I can't remember who told me about it. It was a couple years ago, but it goes a long ways. I've had this for probably two years, three years, but I like to take and just put a little smear across my gaskets. And then on the other side of the mating surface of this gasket would be this. 
and I'll go through and just smear it. You don't need to like cake it on, but just a little bit like that goes a long ways. So yeah, definitely make sure you don't have, they're all gonna leak, but like this will just help it that much more, you know? Okay, that's probably gonna do it for the transmission in this episode. Um, everything's working properly. Returning. Uh, a couple more things to go on this. Once we get the belt drive and all that all hooked up. Um, bikes over here. There's a couple things we're gonna be changing, but we kinda just mocked it up to get the stance that we were going for. Um, but yeah, making good progress on this thing. And I hope this video helps some of you. I've been called, I've been contacted in the past um, by a guy on Instagram that was asking if this was possible to convert his ratchet top four speed to kickstart or what it would take. So I figured it'd be a good video to do. I seem to get asked questions about that pretty often. Uh, not very hard, pretty simple, and relatively cheap. I'll put a link in the description of where you guys can pick up all the parts to do this. They sell it as a kit, I'm pretty sure, but yeah, today I threw it together with some spare ratchet top parts that I had laying around, and it'll work great. So, yeah, like I said before, if you guys like these videos, please like and subscribe and leave a comment on future videos you guys would like to see or if you want to know any more about some of the bikes we have in the shop I'm gonna start doing some spotlights on some of the bikes in here with some of the builders so yeah I really appreciate your guys' support and I'm gonna to try to keep these videos coming at least once a week I took a little break there because the holiday but we're back in action and we got a whole of parts going on this thing so I'll keep the content coming thanks guys